In this video, we'll show how the analysis output is handled, both at the level of governance and integration with other solutions. First, I would like to show you how we can materialize an analysis in a reusable and shared table. I'm here in our example notebook, and I will upload another JSON file. So here we go. Here it is, the file containing the coordinates for all Brazilian states. Upload done. Now I'm going to create a new paragraph where I am going to insert a query that I had previously prepared. This query sums all of our customers' credit card transactions grouped by the Brazilian states. This is possible by crossing the transaction table, which is in a MySQL database, with the cards table that is also in a MySQL database. And our user and states files, which are both JSON files. So here we have the ordered states from the ones with the least number of transactions, Bahia, with 312 million, to the largest number of transactions, Pernambuco, with 652 million. So far, nothing new compared to the previous video. However, I will now add the create table command to my paragraph. We will call it transactions underscore BR. Done. Now, every time anyone wants to look at this data, they just have to run a query on this table. Here is the same data without having to rewrite our query. All the tables created by analysis or loaded on the cache by data import are cataloged in the glue data catalog. Let's open it here. All the tables are here. For instance, the table we used in our example coming from Finn underscore BR. And here's our transactions underscore BR table. Inside, we can see all the information regarding our table, such as the fields that are part of it, their type, as well as other information. Due to this catalog, we now have a high level of integration with the rest of the AWS universe. Let's say a user needs to create a visual analysis with this data, and he might want to create a nice chart to present to his management team. In this case, you simply access QuickSight. Choose a new analysis, new data set, and we now will have the option of Dora as a data source. I will choose my database as the source of the analysis. 
and I will choose our transactions underscore BR table as the object of our example. I will not use spice. As we wait for it to load, here I'm going to create a geospatial chart. Select latitude and longitude. The sum of the values. and a label with the states. Done. Now we can see all of our data arranged on the map. We could, for example, easily identify that in Sergipe, there are many more transactions than in Bahia. where there were only 312 million. But let's say that our analysis needs to be consumed by another company application, or maybe another self-service BI solution, or even by a user who will not be accessing Dora. In that case, we can use Athena. Choose our database, and there will be our tables. Again, here we have the exact same data we presented earlier. The service can also be consumed by JDBC or ODBC, facilitating your integration with other external applications. Finally, it's important that we can share our analysis with others, but also ensure that only the people you want can access your data. At Lake Formation Services, we can see all the tables in our map store. And here they are. If we enter in the table we've just created, we have again all of the information on the table. Like fields, their types, comments, creation, update date, and so on. Here we have the options to grant or revoke access to our table. We can select a user or a role, define if the grant or revoke action will be for the entire table or if any particular column should be excluded from it. And here we have the options. Finally, choose the desired permission. And that's it for this video. Next time, we'll see Dora being used in a machine learning model training and also for their productizing. See you next time.